Good evening. This is CTV News for Thursday, April 13th. I'm Denise Douglas. And I'm Byron Scott. Glad to have you with us tonight. Well, we now know the name of the man arrested in connection with an arson last week. He is 28 year old Aaron Davis and he appeared in court today. A judge decided they'll be held without bond. Now there he is on your screen. They are facing 29 separate charges, including arson and attempted murder for a fire that was set at a house on the 11,000 block of Dunloring Drive and spread to two other houses. Two firefighters suffered minor injuries or treated and released. And in a separate case, Nestor Hernandez also appeared in court charged with killing his three-year-old daughter over the weekend. He is being held without bond. The latest round of Metro track work will begin this weekend on the yellow and green lines in Prince George's County. Phase 14 of WMATA's Safe Track Surge program will start this Saturday and run in two stages. From April 15th to the 29th, Metro Rail trains will not serve the College Park and Greenbelt stations. The second phase will be April 30th to May 14th, during which Greenbelt will remain closed, but College Park will reopen. WMATA will run free shuttle buses to bridge the gap between stations, and the county will step up its bus service to help ease the impact to riders. We're here to see the African American Museum, and so we will make other plans for Saturday outside of the city. It won't affect me. I typically work from home, avoid D.C. when I can, but when I do, I take the Amtrak in. They say that they're going to have shuttles, but Metro's kind of bad with that, so that's just not going to be convenient at all for a lot of people, and I feel bad. Ramada already has a bus bridge in place to help commuters um, with this particular shutdown. So we're just simply supplementing um, to ensure that our residents uh, inconvenience as less as possible. Our local 15X, we have increased our uh, timelines in which originally it would pick up at every 40 minutes and now the frequency will be every 20 minutes because you can find a schedule of the revised bus times on the county website under the Department of Public Works and Transportation. Mark and Amtrak trains will operate normally during the surge. Well, last summer we told you about the pink tax, a term used to refer to the unequal pricing of women and men's products. Those items which are feminine touch, such as a razor for shaving your legs or a pink bicycle for your daughter, often cost more for ladies than men. Now, CTV has learned that Maryland's Attorney General has an ongoing investigation into the issue. Pending investigations, but I can tell you that we see a disparity in prices for very common consumer products. Uh, disparity, what women are charged versus what men are charged. It's referred to by, as, as the pink tax. There are potential issues about uh, the legality of marketing goods in that manner. And uh, I can't really say anything beyond that. Uh, my office is concerned about it, and uh, we're going to stay on top of it. Research shows that women, on average, spend $1,300 more annually but are paid less than men. And Marylanders who want to run for office can now file for, to run in next year's elections. Several Prince Georgians have already declared their intent to run. They include Democrats Kevin Harris for Council, County Council District 9, Anthony Ayers for Sheriff, and Republican Robert Windley in District 23. Elliot Reed and Anthony Triplin are running for Board of Education seats in Districts 3 and 6. Meantime, after an unsuccessful bid for Congress last year, Total Wine founder David Trone says he's exploring a run for Montgomery County. County Executive 2018. Ike Leggett says he's not running for a fourth term, and Maryland's primary election will be held on June 26th of 2018.